polygamous kid being born in this culture. I'm the fourth of 45 kids raised with raised with one dad, four moms. And I go on to have a profound spiritual awakening. And it's from that awakening that uh, I get the message of you got to tell the world your story. <laughs> Clay Wayman, Echoes of Resounding Love. So, Clay, it is so amazing to have you on today because we were discussing earlier. Now, the other piece, too, other things, if you guys stay tuned, we're going to get into, I feel like we're peeking through the curtains and, <laughs> and, and looking in where we're not supposed to look, but we get to look today and we, we get to talk about Thing. I did not know the difference between the, the Latter-day Saints and the works and just so much. And we're just getting started. Clean, so happy, happy, happy to connect. Welcome. All right, let's get into the book. Thank that you. It's an absolute honor to be here. So yeah. go with this. Let's do it. <laughs> so the, the book, Echoes of Resounding Love. Yes. What's the book about? Oh my gosh. It's a big juicy story about a polygamous kid being born in this culture. I'm the fourth of so it's a book about book about me, a memoir. Being I'm the fourth of 45 kids raised with raised with one dad, four moms, and I go on to have a profound spiritual awakening and it's from that awakening that uh, I get the message of you got to tell the world your story and bring this book forward. And so that's what I did. And, you know, what's interesting is I was faced with so many obstacles. One of the obstacles was I got diagnosed with a big, one of the a major medical diagnosis that kills roughly 600,000 Americans every year, if you wrap your mind around that. And I was in the middle of going down a path to be published by a big publisher. And I ended up pulling that route and self-publishing to get my book out because I didn't want anything to stop the reality of that book being out because it felt like it was part of my life mission to at least share that story. And that was my commitment with the divine is to be able to get that story out and that book published. And so I did, and I released it this May, one week before I went to the Amazon for three months for cancer treatment. And, and oh my goodness, because we had our first conversation. We didn't even, we didn't even talk about the book. We talked about the Amazon. We talked about the, is it the shaman? Can I call him that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, shaman's a great one. Shaman's okay. Cordero. <laughs> and you're going back in a couple of weeks. And the miracle and then the cure and miracle in the life and what bring all of that. It's a, that's also common. This isn't even in this juicy book that you put out. That <laughs> yeah. fascinating. So, are, like, yeah, it's a book and a doc. <laughs> so. First question, we're going to go with the things that like, people, how do they find time to find another wife? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, like in this, it's so interesting, my, my story is so vast that we could go back into the, the, the this thing called the work that still is around to all of a sudden the spiritual dimension that is so deep and rich and all that. So how do you find, how do you, how does a guy find in this religion, have, find time to find another wife. No. Uh, how this work, how this religion did it is it was uh, based on being assigned. You know, the, the leaders of the religion would assign. They called it placement marriage. Okay. We're talking your dad, right? And, mm -hmm. and and your dad, first he had your mom, but then the other one. And your siblings, mm -hmm. siblings. That's a very much that all underneath the house are my siblings. I'm going to make sure you really, I love how you, you really do the parameters in the book that th those are my brothers and sisters, all the moms, they're my brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter who their mother is. And that anger is right. at the beginning. It's very much in the beginning, but I have to, so 45 kids, four wives along this journey. I got to ask you, how did you find I got time to get, I'm going to go for a fourth wife. Why not? I, I mean, where is that? How does he find time? You know, it's really different. The, the, I would say it's really different. Like the traditional culture is you, you go out, you meet somebody, you date them for a while, and then, you, you know, you go through that process. So 
all of that this doesn't exist because you're part of religion and they might knock on your door or give you a phone call and say hey we've got this girl for you and so basically it's like so it's basically it just cuts right to the chase and it's like hey we got this girl for you do you want to marry her so it, it's not so much that a man would ask hey do i have time to take on a fourth wife or a fifth wife or what the situation is it, it, their view is this is god offering another blessing to you and so you know are you going to say no to god because here's an opportunity for you and let's get into then so because there's, I have so many questions, but the, the <laughs> also get into that. I, I love in the beginning, you bring us forward. You, you give us context to build upon that. I didn't have, you don't have the latter day saints, right? And the Mormons, but now you're saying that the work and there was a split. Yes. And, okay. And, and the question, and I'm just trying to digest this is that big principle and then you can correct me and go into detail is that you were given directly revelations from God and that within those revelations for God was that a big drive between the two that a person itself not someone predestined you know all of that but that ordinary person could have a revelation and get into that for me and where I'm going with this please help me out <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so what it was is there's a hierarchy of authority that speaks for God. And in this, the, the religion called the work that I was born and raised, raised in, uh, they, they took that as a, they were, lit, they were literally God's mouthpiece on earth. And so they would get the, they would get the revelation when it, particularly when it comes to marriages, they would get the direct revelation that you're supposed to marry this person. And then they would, they would, they would like for like for example a girl of marital age they would they would they do something called turn themselves in to for marriage so they submit to the priesthood authority and then they, they come together and there's six there were six men growing up i i understand since i've left that there's they've expanded that to other to include other as part of the leadership and they would they would find help that girl find a husband and that could be she could either be a first wife or she might be the fifth wife and uh and, and as far as how marriages go, that's 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 how the work does it. And the distinction that you're trying to make there between the Latter Day Saint Church and the work is this was this was part of the foundational teachings of the of of where Mormonism was born, birthed from. The founder Joseph Smith and there's Brigham Young, John Taylor, and there was this there was this political movement where the government, the United States government, this is in the 1800 late 1800s, and they're like, hey, we're going to confiscate your property. You know, unless you comply to a few things, one of the things they want to comply to was you need to abolish this controversial practice of polygamy. And what ultimately led to that is the president of the church at the time, Wilfred Rudress, signed a manifesto that effectively abolished that in the main body. Well, a lot of these people that refer to themselves today as like fundamentalists, they're like, no, this is part of the rest restoration. And you can't, you know, th this compromises the restoration. And so they... There was a break, the Latter-day Saint Church, and there was these, this group of people, thousands of people that broke off and continued the, what, they, what they considered the true, the true gospel, the true work. And ultimately, the religion that I was raised under was called themselves the work of Jesus Christ, and which is another, it's just another term and an, another a version of Mormonism that they feel like they follow cl more closely to the original tenets from their founders. Got it. Big, big shift. So it was a political move to normalize mainstream. That is one way mm -hmm. of saying it. We won't yep. get into the mainstreaming of having more work because we'll get back to that. It's illegal to polygamy, correct, in the United States? It has been for, it has been for a long time. There was a, there was a court ruling, I can't remember how long ago, but it's in recent years where it's been decriminalized in the United States okay. at the federal level. Okay. All right. And... So now the piece I have to that, because it's interesting that that the commitment to the family, the women in the family and taking care of, like the scene opens up that your mom is breastfeeding, taking care of the kids, right? Then the, the other wife is right there pouring Cheerios and like, you guys were loved. You guys were like, that was it. It was taking care of the kids that this is something we all go, there was devotion and that the work and that, but mine was tight. And that contradiction that 
how did that get that reconciled that well no if we have more and yet we have less that will somehow it'll work through explain this to me the <laughs> multiple wives somehow yeah yeah and there's this. why yeah so why the so one of your questions why the multiple wives and then gets other than is how do you feed them all <laughs> basically I have yes. so many questions yes yes yes, yes. 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 Why is they believe that it's an important doctrine to live in the highest degree of glory with God in what they call the celestial kingdom. So the highest paradise for them was called the celestial kingdom, where they could dwell with God with their multiple wives and children and have informed their own earths. The earth kind of like, you know, a version of earth that we that we have on. Uh, and there and it goes into this whole ideology of there being a multiplicity of gods that form the earth and you know the stars in the sky are their own galaxies and their own earth the other gods are control over and our god is part of this one and so if you want to have an opportunity to play with the big boys you've got to play the by the laws and principles of those big boys and part of that is being able to live polygamy or plural and celestial marriage is what they call it so and it's all orchestrated under this hierarchy of priesthood authority making the analogy so were the stars and the collective this then directly related to children and women underneath that that you're supposed to procreate similar to how the abundance of stars is there a direct correlation to that so the the my mention of the stars is just a just an example of of, of just saying hey that i mean it's such a big conversation to have but it's just saying that there's <laughs> There's multiple gods and there's this God is just part of this particular earth. And the, when I say the stars, it's like the stars kind of representing other earths and other galaxies that other gods are like other earths, like similar to ours that are doing a, running a similar program. And so the reason why you practice polygamy is to prepare yourself to be a god to populate earths. And so you have spirit children in the spirit world is the whole ideology. And, and then those spirit kids get born to an earth like here. And I'm just going with it. It's a big conversation. It's, it's, like, <laughs> it's a big conversation. And then we get back to the, because we already had a grounded conversation about the Amazon, where you're going with this. I can't wait. You're, you're a fascinating being. Has anyone told you that? <laughs> I, I, I've heard that before. <laughs> and, but and thank you. Can, I appreciate it. Abundance and respect. And because we spoke before I got to read the book and now I'm back with reading the book. And so guys, the audience, this is what you're seeing because we already had an amazing conversation about, you know, the cure and cancer and the Amazon. And that's another whole, like we get to do that too. Um, so I, I'm not, I'm putting the question out there. Why are men the gods? Well, they're, a woman, the, a woman can be a goddess, <laughs> you know, but they're 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 sealed to they, the whole structure is a patriarchal structure, and that's considered the way how God set it up for the sake of, of order. So I know that's a certainly a, a juicy juicy topic that, that that we could certainly go down that route, but that's that's just it's just part of the doctrine. <laughs> so that's really the way to sum it up. I'm going to turn a little bit over to you. The book. What made you write the book? What are you working on? Where do we go from now? And when do we get to hear from you back after you get back from the app? Where do you want to go with it? You get you get to go anywhere you want with this because you're just, you're fascinatingly incredible. All right. Thank you. You're your sweetheart. So why the, why the book? I never actually ever planned on ever publishing book, especially in memoir. Like in my wildest imagination or dreams, I, I never thought I'd be a writer or even publish a memoir for that matter. I went on to having a profound spiritual awakening through uh, these ancient techniques through what many people refer to today in the West as shamanism. And through, through sh it kind of intrigued me. My sister, one of my sisters introduced me to it, someone who had actually left the religion before me and i reluctantly looked into it and eventually i i discovered that pretty much all religions have their roots in this dimension that is not even really talked about in our history books or in schools this thing called shamanism 
And even in, and even in college, you really have to do an, an, a certain elective or a major to even know and dive into this. And that's another conversation. And I, with with the information age that we live into, there's so much information that's available today that I went down this rabbit hole of discovering that this is a spiritual practice that our ancestors have been part of for for a millennia, for you know, for thousands of years. Within coming from a very strong religious, not just religious background, it was the way of life. It was ingrained in every aspect of the family and life that within that you start to see the fascination of something that connected all other religions going back millennial or going going back a thousand years. Thousands. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I I I reached a point where. I was just on a search for truth. Okay. And that's okay. what I ultimately came to. Love that. I love that. And um because you're a young guy. I mean, there's Thank so you. much here at that the, the other book is coming, but so within this book, what would people besides that it's fascinating? Where do they get to go? What are they because everyone's sitting back that the, the one thing I love about what we get to do is that people saying what do I get to take away from this? What do I get to learn from this? What did you learn that I can apply to my life? Yeah. And this is in relation to my book that's out, that's published now, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. One of the biggest, one of the biggest pieces is we're born into a society. We're born into either religion or non-religion, depending on which country we live in. And the schools we go to, the real and everything about it, they inform us of who we are. And when that's in, in, when we're informed of who we are, we, we build ourselves around a persona. And so we, so for me, there was a certain persona that I was supposed to, and that persona was considered a faithful priesthood holder, so to speak. And it wasn't about a, a, a self-discovery of your of, a, of your authentic expression of who you are, your divine source. It was more about following this religion and their doctrines. And so, there, so the biggest discovery that I'd like that a lot of people come away from, especially reading my book, is discovering how many people operate in their everyday life in a persona that they believe is their real self. And discovering... That it's just a persona. It's this mask that, that we, we, we wear on this state of life. And standing into your authentic self. Discovering who you really are. The the man or the woman or the being behind it up, behind the mask, so to speak, behind the persona. That s- courage, determination to turn and say no so for us you get to receive that because i think that beyond strength and courage what made that shift what was that pivotal shift that you said there's more to me it was this profound experience like and i share this story quite vividly in my book where i had this profound experience and i was told my entire life that you know god is a man that it, you know, sits on a, his throne in this kingdom. And I have this profound spiritual experience and I'm having this interaction with God and it's a woman. <laughs> well, I should say, a feminine, by the way, I love that. that. Uh, so there you go. And I was basking in this most incredible, this incredible amount of love. And the 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 message that came away from that is to fully shine my love like like she shared with me that my purpose in being born is to shine this love through every heart for, through the hearts of every man woman and child that i ever that I ever meet ever any being that i ever encounter in my life and she she pointed to to really shine this love that i must look to the rock of integrity and establish this integrity in my life. And what I knew, what I realized in that moment was I was going to church and pretending to be part of this religion when I had checked out mentally approximately eight years before, some of from my own self-discoveries. And so 
to really step into what this divine love really is. My book, Echoes of Resounding Love, uh, I would need to step into this realm of powerful integrity. And that was when I finally got completely clear that, you know, I need to finally make the decision with my whole family that, hey, this is what I'm doing. And what I'd like to make clear with your listeners, just to bring a little context to this, when you leave this religion, it's not just making a decision where you show up for church on Sunday. You're you're making a decision that has the 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 implications affect every aspect of your life where 90% of your associates that you knew as childhood, they're gonna view you now as something very bad in their context called an apostate, which they're told by their leaders that you really shouldn't be associating with apostates. And if you do, you need to keep it very and so basically that that what that effectively means is 90% of your associates are going to be cut off. And so so if you I have five generations of this. And so if you have layers and layers of culture of 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 uh, yeah. generations of you have of culture around this and and I'm a first generation to pop out of this you're effectively saying hey may they they may not the way they view it is uh, when you pop when you say hey you're not part of your life you're saying to your entire ancestral line who's been part of it that hey you know better and they're like how dare you you arrogant fool you know so there's a lot there's a lot that goes into making that decision of hey i'm going to establish integrity so i can really shine god's love in the world i've got to say that gets a moment of course again it goes back to just your courage and your strength and your divine and what you're being called to do so Mm -hmm. uh, i just i want to acknowledge you for just how tremendous that is yeah thank you so now you had 45 brothers and sisters, five generations. You had these amazing women that loved you. You had your father. Um, what is life like now? Is there any overlap? Has anyone else reached out? And- I, I would say I've developed a really close relationship with my mother. And I have to, when you're raised in this culture, when I say my mother, I have to say my biological mother <laughs> because that could that could mean, you know, that could mean who, who are you talking about here? Right, because uh, but yeah, my, would be considered as well that they loved you. Yes, absolutely, and I, and I really believe there's still a love there, and that that's that's really that's interesting about this juxtaposed position to be in, is you know from their point of view and indoctrination, the ones that are staying in, you know, I'm they they love me, but it's more like he's a lost soul type of thing. He lost his way. Now, yeah yeah but my mother has my mother has seen the light she's no longer part of the religion although she's still with my dad but she's come along with me i have a few siblings that have that have come along as well so how is life now i'll tell you what i've never i've never experienced so much freedom in my in my life it's and it's been amazing and so i get to build my life based on my terms not based on somebody else's terms and so that's that. So it's been a breath of fresh air. I've been in the, you know, I've been an entrepreneur since a young age. I have a mortgage business that I've been in. And now I have another mentoring business that I'm, you know, that I've launched. And what's really interesting is one of the things that some of the, a lot of people in the entrepreneur space have talked about, as they said, you become a lot like the five closest people that you hang around. And so when I was part of that religion, I was hanging around people that were very narrow-minded very close-minded and i didn't realize how much that residue kind of just (laughs) fell on me even though i wasn't really really part of it and so how is my life now it's expansive like you can say you can pick your topic and i like let's have a conversation we can talk about it in a spiritual dimension or otherwise and uh it's it's beautiful. I'm excited for what comes next. Your experience and your leadership and what you stand for can really be taken for so many people, your strength and what you were able to move forward with. So if you have someone that's out there that is not being able to stand into their authentic self for, for whatever reason, right? And they're alone. 
right? Because they can't share this with their closest people in their lives. What would you say to them? I would say that there's a couple of ways to answer it. One of the, one of the ways to say it is this path in the beginning is, can be very lonely. That's, that, that, that's a real thing. Another, another thing, if somebody's alone is I would invite them to seek out a mentor. Uh, some kind of some kind of spiritual men mentor through that, and that's part of the reason that that's really the motivation of why I I I started my mentoring platform is to assist people that are like alone, they don't know where to go, they want to, their heart's telling them, but they just need just a tiny little bit of assistance. And there's other there's other people in this space as well, so it doesn't have to be me. What's really interesting about mentor, uh, this is something that is well deep in the Hindu culture. These mentors, they might call, they might refer to them as gurus in, in India. So, and in, in the native cultures, they don't necessarily refer them as shamans, but we as the West looking at their culture, we might call themselves shamans, but they might refer themselves as medicine woman or medicine man. And so, or the elders, you know, so there's, there's a, there are, there are mentors that people could reach out to and I would invite them I would invite them to, if they're feeling alone, to go to a mentor and, and see what, and, and, and a mentor can assist them. The piece of the being different and, mm -hmm. and finding the strength to say, this is not really who I am, but I'm going to find out what that is, what strength would you give them and what words of encouragement? Thank you. Cause I, I tell you what, something really pinged really past powerfully and strong with me with when you said that. So you said, what about, you know, being different? Here's the odd uh, Here's what you have to realize and have really clear in your mind and in your heart, really. What you're really doing and what I've really done is you're stepping into the authentic expression of who you are. And what's astonishing is that alone in this society makes you different. Which implies most people are living in a mask, a persona. And so there's a, another way to say it is there's a, we don't, a lot of people don't live real lives. And so you might step out and be abnormal only because you're shining your most authentic beauty that you are. And so I think, I think someone would need to be certainly clear on who they are, on who they are and be unbashful, unbashful about expressing that. And it's a process too. It's a journey that continue to standing in who you are and finding the courage to And you may fall down, right? You may, <laughs> you know... <laughs> Things that pull you back. And I know that this was part of that download that you got, that vision or whatever you want to call it, that that authentic self and who you're being, that when we are in that most authentic self, we are truly then within our most divine. 100%. Yeah, because we're tapping into who our, our source. Yeah. And everybody has a source and you don't have to believe it to have a source. I mean, people that are atheists have a source. They just might say their source is the womb. And that's okay. <laughs> there's, and you know, there's, there's an intelligence behind that even caused the womb to be, and that's the dimension that I'm referring to. Okay. So what are you working on? How can people get in touch with you? And then we, we get to come back and we're talking about the Amazon because it's another whole, whole amazing thing. I can't wait. So at this <laughs> moment, with the, the current book, how mm -hmm. can people get in touch with what do you work and let's put all the links on. And yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So if people want to check out the book, Echoes of Resounding Love, A True Story of a Polygamous Kid's Journey to Spiritual Awakening. That's the subtitle. They can buy it on, my preferred method is Amazon.com. You can actually buy it on any online book platform, uh, Barnes & Noble, Target, Walmart, Books A Million. So whatever, whatever place somebody would like to buy that book whatever platform they'd like to use. What am I working on right now? What I'm really stepping into is a 90 day total life transformation mentorship program. And part of that 
Yeah, thank you. So this mentorship program is areas I focus on is spirituality, health, nutrition, finance, and much, much more. And part of that mentorship program includes me taking them down to the Amazon to work with the shamans for two weeks. That's part of the program. And then we, and then they work with me to after that. So I'll be there with them with the shamans and then we'll, then we'll come back home and we'll integrate the experience and help transform their life live and in color. I'm so grateful I get to go into 23 with this new amazing energy that's you. <laughs> You're just so exciting, so fascinating, and so deep in who you truly are. Thank you. Okay, okay let's let's put the links in there. So we're gonna do a follow-up because then the next is what we're going to get into the Amazon, the shamans of the, the whole course, what that looks like and how fascinating is that? And then, yes, truly the, your whole, you know, as far as cancer and what that looks like, the holistic curing of that and, and just so much. I just want to say, yes. Yeah. Thank anything you. you want to say about that? One thing, one thing that came to mind was you mentioned how could, you know, links for people to get a hold of me. They could reach out to me through my website, vasperlife.com, V-A-S-P-E-R life.com. And what would you like to me say about, about cancer and that healing is I would invite somebody to do the, go down a rabbit hole and ship shamanism and discover that these were the original doctors. And, you know, the, the Amazon supplies roughly 70% of all the, of all the different plant cancer treatments in the world are plants that come out of the Amazon. And so I went straight down to the source. So, and that's, like I said, that could be reserved for an entire interview. <laughs> it, will it will be because it's so much. And we only, we only just touched on echoes of resounding love. We just touched yeah. on it. Yeah, and we just scratched the surface on that too. Did. Yeah. Peace here for for parents sharing this book with their kids. Would this be something that you would say yes as they get to allow their children to become who and the parents to become who they really are. There are some graphic things in my book, so I'd probably recommend somebody be at least eighteen before they read my book. Yeah. Uh, so but there's a lot of things that parents can take away that they can sh have some major shifts as they raise their children and, and how they work with teenagers. They could find the tremendous help in, in what they're going to read in this book. I had somebody tell me, they're like, you know, what's interesting is you say your book's a memoir. What it really is, is a self-help book. <laughs> People don't know it yet. <laughs> Yeah. there's just so much more and i mean in your young guy of the memoir and at the end of the day you were called to write this right yep yeah. and then here we go all right so the gift of generosity and uh, allowing for others i just want to say bravo my friend and um I'm really glad to be able Thank to you. call you that and grow into that because that's the tweet. I get you back. <laughs> Plain Wayman. And again, Echoes of Resounding Love. Link is down below. And to be continued. Thank you. Bye, everyone. See you soon.